Hello and welcome to Upside Down. Today I'm going to continue and build on top of the logic that we created in our previous tutorial for dissolving material. I wanted to show you how to use similar logic for dissolving, but instead of the camera, we are going to have a parameter of how the material is being dissolved and we are going to create a effect that is being burned out on the edges. So as a start, this is the material that we created last time. I'm going to put a link down in the description below if you would like to see the video how we got to this point. Now, instead of using our camera position, we are going to add a constant, which is going to be the value of how dissolved our asset is. First thing first, let's make a new material. And in here, we are going to add a color. Again, if you're working on the older version, you're going to need to add an old. If you're working on a newer version, like I'm currently, we don't need to add that part. I'm going to copy the same texture from our previous material. So we are taking that texture. I want a constant parameter. So I'm going to hold one and press somewhere, right click, convert to parameter, and I'm going to name it dissolve. So this is going to be the amount of how dissolved our material is. I'm going to add an add node over here. So we are taking the texture and in B, we are going to put the dissolve parameter. Then from here, we will take a saturate. And if I just put a one minus to invert the result that we are receiving here and connect this to our opacity mask, we are going to get the base dissolve. So let's first put our material from opaque to masked so that we can connect it. And now you can see that by moving this parameter, we will get a different amount of our asset being dissolved. Now for the fun part, we are going to make the edges slightly burned, for which in order to have the effect look like a burn, we need to use emissive color. We're going to start from the subtract and I'm going to pull another subtract over here. We will create another constant, which is going to be our parameter for how much the width of that burn is going to be. So convert to parameter, we are connecting that to B. Then we are going to add a smooth step in order to make the transition smoother. Instead of our subtract going into our min value, this is going to go into our value parameter. And we need to create another constant, which is going to control, I'm making it a parameter, the step of the smoothness. Now, the only bit that we need to add is what sort of a color we would like our glowing bits to be. So I'm going to hold three on the keyboard and add a vector three parameter. Let's make it reddish. I'm going to use a multiply. A goes here, B goes to our color, and then this gets connected to our emissive color. Now you can see that this is pretty much affecting everything. So this means that we need to touch some of the values over here. We can either control it from the master material. So let's say we can set up, for example, here 0 0.5. So you can see that now this is going to be over the edges. Or of course, since we converted everything to parameters, we can make this inside our material instance. Before applying and testing the material inside our scene, I'm going to make just a little bit more space and organize some of the things around. And also I'm going to add another multiplier which is going to be for the power of how much exactly the glowing bits are glowing. So we are coding one and convert to parameter. And this is going to be glowing power. Again, conducting this to B and I'll give it a value of one for now. But again, this is something that we will be able to control from our material instance. Now I'm going to apply, save it. And let's go in our scene and test it out. Here, I'm going to make a new sphere. Then before assigning the material, I'm going to right click, create material instance, MI fade, and we are going to assign the material instance. Reason for us using the material instance and not the master material is because we want to have the access to the parameters that we just exposed. So if I open this, we can open our global parameters or texture parameters over here and change the texture that we have. And from our global parameters, we can change the sliders and this way see exactly what's happening directly in the viewport. So if we want to increase, for example, the glow, we can make it like this. And here for the smoothness of the transition, this also depends a lot on the texture that you're having. I think that something like this looks all right. So now we have a material 
that can be dissolved using a parameter. The same logic that we applied on our master material here for the glowing can be as well used inside our camera material from the previous tutorial. One way of doing it is, of course, we can always copy and paste this logic into our material. This is going to make that graph a little bit harder to read what exactly is happening. So instead, when I'm adding functionality like this, I usually prefer using material functions. To create a material function, we just need to go to our content browser, go to materials, advanced, and then material function. I'm going to type it MF fade. And I'm going to paste this logic in here before applying and adding our material function inside our previous material. We need to add an input. So here is the place where we do input apply. And very important part is if you would like to see your material function inside the library when you are right clicking and typing over here, we need to click this expose to library so that it's visible. Now going back to our material, we can connect this to our emissive color and you can see that we get the result, but an inverted version of it. So we need to a little bit adjust our material function. I'm going to go back to it. And between our input and what we receive here, I'm going to put one minus. And now after applying and going back, you can see that we get similar result with our power and how exactly it dissolves like burning on the edges. Let's go back to the viewport and see how the result looks like. So yeah, going back to the viewport, you can see that the material we created last time now has these edges as well. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Subscribe and follow for more game development tutorials. See you next time.